Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Testing ILS with a CMA180. In this presentation, you'll learn how to configure ILS localizer and glide slope signal generation on a Rodian Schwartz CMA180 radio test set. This presentation assumes a general technical familiarity with ILS localizer and glide slope signals. If you're not already familiar with these signals, you might want to watch the presentation Understanding ILS before proceeding with this presentation. Although marker beacons are technically part of ILS, marker beacon signal generation is not covered in this presentation. Please see the related presentation, Testing Marker Beacons with a CMA180, to learn about using the CMA180 to generate marker beacon signals. To enter avionics mode on the CMA180, simply select avionics from the list of available analog modes. There are four tabs under avionics. VOR, ILS, Marker Beacon, and Analyzer. All ILS signal generation parameters are configured under the ILS tab. These parameters can be divided into two general areas. The first are the generic RF, connector, and control parameters. The second are the ILS specific parameters. Note that there are separate tabs for configuring the localizer and glide slope signals, and that the CMA180 only generates one of these signal components at a time. Before we look at the localizer and glide slope specific parameters, let's first look at the RF and connector settings. Remember that ILS uses paired frequencies for localizer and glide slope, with the localizer frequencies at VHF and the glide slope frequencies at UHF. These frequencies can be entered in megahertz or can be entered as ICAO channel numbers. For example, the 109.5 megahertz localizer frequency corresponds to ICAO channel 32X. If we enable frequency pairment, then the CMA180 will automatically configure the correct paired glide slope frequency for this localizer frequency and vice versa. Level sets the RF transmit power, and external attenuation values can be entered to compensate for any attenuation in the RF path. Either RF COM or RF IN can be used to transmit the localizer or glide slope signals. Finally, the generator or play button is used to start signal generation, although enabling Start Generator automatically will cause signal generation to begin as soon as this tab is opened. Let's start by looking at localizer signal generation. Note that many of the concepts and terms used in localizer signal generation are also used in glide slope signal generation. By default, the CMA180 generates both the 90 and 150 Hz lobes of the localizer signal. It is, however, possible to uncheck either of these boxes and have the CMA generate only one of the lobes. The frequency of each lobe can be changed individually, and the phase offset defines the phase difference between the signals in each lobe. Normally, none of these parameters need to be modified. The parameter DDM, or Difference in Depth of Modulation, is, however, the most important parameter when generating localizer signals, and its value is usually configured by the user. So it would be a good idea at this point to explain what DDM is and why it's so important. Both lobes of the localizer are AM modulated, the left lobe at 90 Hz and the right lobe at 150 Hz. The modulation depth of each lobe is different depending on our position within the lobe. On the runway center line, both lobes have the same AM modulation depth of 20%. As we move to the right of the center line, the AM modulation depth of the 150 Hz lobe increases and the AM modulation depth of the 90 Hz slope decreases. For example, at this point, the modulation depth of the 150 Hz slope has increased to 30%, and the depth of the 90 Hz slope has decreased to 10%. And at the far right edge of the localizer pattern, we see the 150 Hz slope at 40% AM modulation depth, with a zero modulation depth, so to speak, on the 90 Hz slope. The localizer determines position deviation from the center line by using the difference in the depth of modulation between these two lobes. Mathematically, we can say the difference in depth of modulation is the measured 90 Hz AM modulation depth minus the measured 150 Hz AM modulation depth divided by 100. Related to DDM is something called SDM, or sum of depth of modulation, which is the sum of the modulation depth of each lobe, again divided by 100. So an aircraft that's exactly centered on the runway center line 
we'll see the same AM modulation depth on both lobes, and the difference in depth of modulation, or DDM, will be zero. Moving to the left of the center line, that is, more into the 90 Hz lobe, causes DDM to increase, or become more positive. Moving to the right of the center line, or more into the 150 Hz lobe, causes DDM to decrease, or become more negative. These changes in DDM are what cause the needle to move right and left on a localizer dial. Difference in depth of modulation can be expressed in three different ways. DDM depth, DDM percent, and DDM current. DDM current refers to the amount of current supplied to the localizer gauge or dial. The amount of right-left needle deflection is a function of this current. The conversion between units is done using these simple formulas. In case you're wondering where the 967.75 microamps comes from, this value corresponds to 150 microamps at a DDM of 15.5%, which is normally seen at the outer extremity of the ILS course sector. DDM is closely related to something called fly mode. Fly mode is simply an indication of which direction the pilot needs to fly in order to intercept the localizer center line. This is based on the current value of DDM. If fly mode shows right, this means that the 90 Hz slope is dominant, DDM is positive, and therefore the pilot must fly right to intercept the center line. If fly mode shows left, then the 150 Hz slope is dominant, DDM is negative, and the pilot has to fly left to center the aircraft with the runway. Note that fly mode on the CMA is really more of an indication than a configuration parameter. The COM-ID signal is used by pilots to ensure that they're tuned to the proper localizer. Localizer arrays transmit this ID signal as Morse code, but for testing purposes, a simple AM modulated tone is often used instead of an ID signal. The frequency of this tone and the modulation depth can also be configured. Enabling the ID signal will cause this tone to be heard when the ILS receiver is tuned to the signal frequency. Now that we've covered localizer, let's move on to discussing glide slope. As previously noted, most of the concepts in localizer apply to glide slope signals as well. The basic glide slope settings work the same way for glide slope as they do for localizer. They allow you to change the frequency of the two lobes, turn one of the lobes off, and change the phase offset between the lobes. Again, these are completely analogous to the basic settings for localizer. Glide slope is also analogous to localizer when it comes to difference in depth of modulation, but with one important difference. The standard AM modulation depth along the glide slope is 40% for each lobe, as opposed to the 20% standard modulation depth seen on the localizer center line. As with localizer, an aircraft on the glide slope will see the same depth of modulation from both lobes, and DDM will be zero. Flying above the glide slope moves the plane more into the 90 Hz slope and DDM increases. Flying below the glide slope moves the plane more into the 150 Hz slope, causing a decrease in DDM. Similar to the way that the localizer works, the glide slope needle is controlled by these changes in DDM. The fly mode in glide slope works much the same way as it does for localizer. If the difference in depth of modulation is positive, this means the aircraft is above the glide slope, and the pilot should fly down. Conversely, if DDM is negative, this means the aircraft is below the glide slope, and the pilot should fly up. Most glide slope settings on the CMA have the same meaning or effect as their localizer counterparts. There are, however, two differences to make note of. First, the default sum of depth of modulation for glide slope is 80%. This is different from the default value of 40% in localizer. The second is that the DDM glide slope current is calculated using the scaling factor 857.125 microamps. In localizer, the scaling factor was 967.75 microamps. One last feature of the ILS signal generator functionality is the info pane. This is a graphical depiction of localizer or glide slope needles as a function of DDM. For localizer, the info pane shows DDM graphically using a localizer style display and a fly right left indication. For glide slope, DDM and fly up down is shown using a vertical glide slope style display. Let's summarize the main points regarding ILS signal generation.
The Rodian Schwartz CMA180 radio test set can be used to generate both ILS localizer and glide slope signals. Note, however, that only one of these modulation types can be active at a time. The most important parameter when configuring localizer and glide slope is DDM, or difference in depth of modulation. DDM provides the left-right or up-down guidance to the pilot. And lastly, remember that many of the parameters used in localizer and glide slope configuration are often the same or very similar in meaning and function. This concludes our presentation, Testing ILS with a CMA180. Thanks for watching.